Hey everyone, I wanna talk a bit more about limits now that we've learned how to find derivatives of all of our functions. So earlier in the course, we were able to evaluate these limits uh, using some of our limit laws, maybe looking at the graph of our function or creating a table of values and doing a numeric approach. And sometimes we could uh, find the limits algebraically if we could like factor and cancel things out. Well, for a limit like this, the only technique we had uh, that would work at the time was really kind of a numerical technique. We didn't really have an algebraic approach to this limit. But uh, once we learn about L'Hopital's rule, we're gonna see that we can actually do this limit algebraically, but it requires derivatives. That's why we were kind of saving this discussion for later in the course. Now that we know how to find derivatives, we can go back and find these limits using our derivatives, right? So if we try to evaluate this limit using direct substitution, just plug in our x value of interest, uh, that's what we should always do when trying to work with a limit. Well, we get sine of zero, which is zero, divided by x, which goes to zero, and so we end up with this quotient of zero over zero. This is a, an example of what we call an indeterminate form. We refer to this as an indeterminate form, and there's gonna be some other inde indeterminate forms that we will run into that we'll see uh, later. Uh, we call this an indeterminate form because, well, as the name suggests, we can't really determine the value of this expression just by looking at it, right? Uh, for these indeterminate forms, there's usually kind of two rules that are at play, they're kind of contradicting each other, and that's why we can't determine their values, right? So here we have zero divided by zero. One thing we've learned before is if we have uh, zero divided by any non-zero constant, like zero over four or zero over negative three, that always evaluates to zero. That's basically just saying multiplying by zero zeros everything out. But we have another rule that's coming into play that's gonna contradict that one. We're also dividing by zero here, and whenever we divide by zero, we get some undefined expression, right? When we think about graphs, dividing by zero usually creates that vertical asymptote causing our function to shoot off towards positive infinity or down towards negative infinity. Well, so those are kind of the two things that are contradicting each other and making this hard to evaluate. The numerator kind of tells us, well, everything's gonna get zeroed out, while the denominator tells us everything's gonna blow up towards positive or negative infinity, and what actually happens could be either of those or something entirely different. So to kind of resolve this issue, to evaluate this indeterminate form, we have to use what is called L'Hopital's rule. All right, so what L'Hopital's rule says is if we have two functions, f and g, they're differentiable, uh, so we can actually take their derivatives and evaluate them. So they're differentiable at this x value of a, that's gonna be our limit value of interest, and our denominator function g of x is not equal to zero near a, it could be equal to zero at a, but just really close by, it's not equal to zero. And then if we have one of these following two conditions uh, met, then we can apply this thing called L'Hopital's rule. So one of these two conditions that have to be met is that both of the limits have to go to zero for our functions, or both of the limits have to go to some version of infinity, right? If we look at that first case, that's kind of the case we have over here in our sine of x over x example. Both of our functions in the numerator and the denominator approach zero, creating one of these indeterminate forms. That's what we can apply L'Hopital's rule, but we can only apply L'Hopital's rule to these indeterminate quotients where we have zero over zero, or in the second case, infinity over infinity. So in the case where we have one of these indeterminate quotients, when we encounter a limit like this, we can try to evaluate that limit by looking at the limit of the ratio of the derivatives of the function. And so one other thing to note about L'Hopital's rule is when we write the uh, kind of formal statement of L'Hopital's rule, it's written for these finite limits as x approaches a, but L'Hopital's rule applies to those infinite limits as x approaches negative infinity or positive infinity, and it also applies to our one-sided limits as well. L'Hopital's rule applies to any type of limit. The thing we have to be careful for and ensure before we try to invoke L'Hopital's rule is that we are working with an indeterminate form of zero over zero or infinity over infinity. So in our example over here, we've kind of verified that we do have that indeterminate quotient of zero over zero, and that means we can apply L'Hopital's rule. And what L'Hopital's rule tells us is that the limit as x approaches zero of sine of x over x is gonna be equivalent to the limit as x approaches zero of the derivative of the numerator or the rate of change of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator or divided by the rate of change of the denominator. So we have to look at the derivative of the numerator over the derivative of the denominator. We don't have to use the quotient rule or anything like that here. That's what makes L'Hopital's rule very, very nice and easy to work with. We just have to take the derivative of sine, which is cosine of x, 
and divide that by the derivative of x, which is 1. And now by L'Hopital's rule, these two limits are equivalent. And the idea here is we can actually evaluate this new version of our limit. Right? And we can evaluate this just using direct substitution. If we plug in x equals 0, this simplifies to cosine of 0 over 1, or just cosine of 0, which is equal to exactly 1. So we were able to find the limit of this uh, function algebraically using L'Hopital's rule. And so now we have a new algebraic approach to finding our limits. But we have to be a bit careful because L'Hopital's rule only applies to these indeterminate quotients like 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. We're going to encounter some other types of indeterminate forms. And when we try to evaluate the limits of these other indeterminate forms, we're going to have to put some algebraic work in to first rewrite them as an indeterminate quotient.